Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. I'm a senior keeper here at Brookfield Zoo. I work in the Herpet Aquatic Department. Today we're going to show you some of our newts and salamanders that we have here at the swamp. Uh, right here we have some of our Kaiser's newts. These guys are from uh, Iran. They like streams uh, that are pretty slow moving. Uh, they'll also go into some of the offshoot ponds as well. We have seven here at Brookfield Zoo. We just put some food in their form, so they're a little bit active looking for their food. In the wild, these guys eat um, pretty much any kind of small invertebrate that's aquatic. Uh, so they'll get larvae from mosquitoes or uh, worms. We feed them here at the zoo blood worms, black worms, crickets. Anything that's small that we can get as much diversity as we can. This is as big as these guys get. They only get about five to six, seven inches long. You see a lot of that is their tail. So they're decent swimmers. They use that tail to swim just like a fish does. Go back and forth. We can tell the difference between these guys based on their color pattern. So what we will do is take a picture of all of them so we can ID them. So we'll track their weights track who's who. Are they, uh, are they endangered? These guys are um, vulnerable. So they used to be critically endangered. Um, they've done more studies where they believe there are more in the wild. However, uh, they are super at risk still. Um, habitat destruction and also illegal pet trade is really big. Um, so because they are so pretty and so beautiful, a lot of people go um, to the wild to collect them for the pet trade, which is really unfortunate. What's their uh, typical lifespan? Oh, uh, these guys can live pretty long. Um, I can't remember exactly for these guys, uh, but I want to say um, it could be like 20 years, but I'm not quite sure. These uh, guys are about like three years old right now, so they've still got a long way to go. I'm um, gonna just reach in sexual maturity. When they lay eggs, um, they'll do kind of single eggs, but they'll kind of be more in a strand. So they'll be throughout um, the tank. Um, the eggs will hatch in about 14 to 23 days. And then it takes about uh, 50 days for um, the larva to then uh, metamorph into uh, adults like you see here. Uh, why do they have this particular coloring? Uh, these guys, it helps them blend in, but also it, it serves as a warning um, to predators that these guys don't taste so good. Uh, so where if somebody eats them, it might feel sick. Um, kind of like poison frogs, these guys are very similar to where they have toxins in their skin to where it's not fun to eat them. So in their tank, they've got um, some spots where they can come up out of the water. So how much, how much time do they spend in the water and how much... Um, I guess land. So these guys spend most of their time in the water. In the wild, uh, during the winter months, um, they it's very actually dry uh, to where they'll estivate and they'll dig down into the where there's no water left. Uh, so all the streams in the water dries up to where they'll hunkle down into some burrows and kind of wait a couple months and then when water comes back, they'll come back out. These guys are newts, so they are mostly aquatic. Uh, so here at the zoo, uh, we keep them mostly aquatic, however, they have the option to climb out. Typically, when they that change of water to no water kind of introduces them uh, to wanting to breed. So how long can they stay underwater? Do they have to hold their breath? These guys can breathe through their skin, uh, which is really cool. Um, you can also see that more so in our Chinese giant salamanders, um, where they do come up to breathe. Um, and certain salamanders, um, and it's, some have a lungs and some don't, um, to where they just their skin is able to act enough to where they don't need lungs. And over time, they've evolved to not need lungs, which is pretty crazy. They can just breathe through their skin. We do see them come up and take a breath of air occasionally, and they're pretty cool. Uh, so, what is the difference between a newt and a salamander? So, there's not much. Um, very similar to turtles and tortoises. Um, all newts 
are uh, newts are salamanders. However, not all salamanders are newts. Um, newts are mostly aquatic. They spend most of their life in the water, and they typically are a lot more um, bumpy. They're not so uh, slender, and smooth. These guys are really fun to watch when they swim. Yes. Alright, so speaking of the salamanders. Yeah, so we have our two Chinese giant salamanders here. These guys were at confiscation in 2016. So we worked with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service who collected these guys illegally. Someone was trying to import them into the country. And we worked with them to house these guys. Um, and we created a nice little home for them. Unfortunately, illegal pet trade and illegal products are a huge problem with wildlife. Uh, wildlife trafficking um, it can generate billions of dollars. So it's a big business, very similar to drug trafficking. Uh, these guys were a part of that. Uh, what's really bad about that is taking these guys from the wild um, is that in the wild, for salamanders, there's a disease and fungus called bee cell, very similar to like frogs decline, um, and chytrid. So it's a fungus that takes over the skin of the salamanders and creates little holes and lesions, um, and they eventually die from it. It's a huge problem in Europe right now. Um, in the U.S., luckily, we have not found it yet, um, but we are really trying to prevent that from happening. So by preventing illegal trade and releasing animals into the wild when they shouldn't be, we're really hoping to keep that disease from entering our populations. Uh, so what's this salamander doing right now with his mouth open? He's taking a big yawn, maybe resetting <laughs> his jaws or taking a big gulp of water. Uh, they kind of know the top of the tank's open right now, so they know they're about to get fed. So they're kind of ready to prepare. So I'm going to go grab a fish and see if I can get him. All right. And there was a question, uh, where do they live? And they do live in Central and Eastern China. So that these guys cool. can take quite big fish. They kind of just suck it in like a vacuum. <laughs> so you just talked about the difference between newts and salamanders and newts are more aquatic but it seems like these guys stay in the water. So these guys are fully aquatic. With most wildlife there's always exception to every rule. These are one of three species of giant salamanders. We've got these Chinese giant salamanders, there's Japanese, and we also have the hubbender here in North America. There is some genetic studies going on where they believe there's more species uh, but those have been the big three for a while. Um, so I'll go grab the other one for the this okay. guy. What is my favorite salamander? I don't know if I have a favorite salamander. These guys are pretty cool. They're just so big. Um, yeah, how big do these guys get? So these guys can get over five feet. Uh, oh. and they can get up to like 50 pounds, or 40, 20 pounds. So they get very, very big where you can't have to carry them like over your shoulder. Uh, these guys are only about five years old, we think, uh, so they got a lot of growing left to do. Holy cow, they look very otherworldly. Yeah, so you can kind of see on their sides they got all those folds in their skin. So these guys pretty much use all that extra skin um, as more surface area to help them breathe. So they get as much oxygen out of the water as they can. And are they uh, freshwater or saltwater? These guys are freshwater. Freshwater. So they can come out of the water um, to move from stream to stream if they have to. However, they, they'll start to dry out pretty quickly, so they pretty much really need to stay in the water. Um, they use that big head of theirs to get fit themselves underneath very large boulders and rocks. I know with hellbenders here in the U.S., when researchers go and survey them, it takes three to four people to lift up the rocks because the rocks are so big that they're hiding. Um, they'll use those hiding spaces under those rocks to either hunt for food or um, small aquatic insects, or they'll also use them for dens to lay their eggs, where the males will protect the dens and allow females to come in and lay, uh, lay their eggs. Uh, so what other newts and salamanders are here at the swamp? So we've got 
isn't. Fire Belly is right here. These guys are uh, kind of see on the bottom here. You can really see their skin color. Hence, they get their name Fire Belly. So these guys were also another confiscation. Um, these guys are very, very common in the pet trade. To where, as I was saying before, with B cell um, and the fungus, um, these guys uh, can carry it um, and transfer it to either North American species or pets at the zoo. So when we get confiscations in here to the zoo, we have to have our vet staff run tests to make sure that we don't have any uh, introduction of these pathogens. Uh, so the illegal pet trade is illegal, not just because people are a bunch of meanies, but because they can really do some a, a lot of harm. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Hmm. So what do these guys eat? So these guys will also feed in the kind of same things, bloodworm, small worms, or black worms, crickets, or earthworms, trot worms. Now, this is about as big as these guys get. So they're very small, and these guys are typically not so much in the water, but more like under bark and things, and they'll go to the water to breed. And did you say where they're from? Uh, these guys are from eastern China, uh, so they like still moving water, uh, oh. so not very fast. Whereas the Kaiser Newts, um, they can take it a little bit more current in the water. These guys like it pretty much a lot stiller. Uh, how often do you feed all the different... Um... So it depends. Um, one of the big things um, with all reptiles and amphibians is temperature. If it's colder, we don't have to feed as much. If it's warmer, we have to feed a little bit more because they rely on their environment uh, for their metabolism. Typically, we feed these guys two to three times a week. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, because they're so small, it's not that much. Um, so these guys do a cool thing. Uh, most salamanders and newts where they will kind of dance as a breeding ritual um, before they breed, where they will either wave their hands or posture their tail or throw their tail, move like perpendicular to one each other and they'll follow each one another. Um, there's some pretty cool videos out on YouTube of sound man kind of dancing in a breeding ritual, uh, which is pretty cute. <laughs> we can, you can see, these, see him. <laughs> yeah, these really cool colors. And again, these are kind of warning signs uh, for predators to not eat these guys because they're not going to taste so good. Are there other newts or salamanders in other places here at Brookfield Zoo or just here in the swamp? Uh, there are some, I believe, at Hamill Family Play Zoo. Um, I'm not sure if they're on exhibit, though. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, come to the swamp. You want to get all your... Uh, all your newton yeah. salamanders. <laughs> yeah, we're really lucky in North America. Uh, we are kind of the king of salamanders and newts. Um, we have quite a few species here in Illinois, more to the south, but there are some around here, like the blue spotted and tiger salamanders. They're pretty hard to find. Um, but North America is famous for our salamander species and diversity. Uh, in the Appalachia area, we have more species than anywhere else in the world. Um, are they venomous or poisonous? Uh, po some species are poisonous. They'll, to what degree, uh, you'd have to eat a lot of them for somebody like us to really feel sick from them. Uh, just touching them, typically no. Uh, poison, you typically more uh, touch or ingest. Venom uh, is more injected into you. So like a spider has venom, snakes have venom. Frogs and salamanders are more poisonous. It's more eating or touch. Um, how long have all of these different animals that were confiscated been here? How long have they been here? Yeah. So the giant salamanders have been here about five years. We got them when they were very small. Uh, they were shipped, uh, they were probably about four inches Whoa. when they got here. And now they're two and a half feet, probably. Um, and these fire bellies, I believe, have been here for a couple of years as well. Okay. And uh, the Chinese giant salamanders, do they move around a lot or do they just kind of hang out like this? Because they just seem to be chilling. They typically just hang out. In the wild, they're more ambush predators. They wait for stuff to come by and then they 
kind of like you saw, they just suck up their prey that comes by. Okay. Uh, so they like to burrow down and hang out. Mm -hmm. Hey, what? What's your favorite salamander or newt? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, here at the zoo, I like these Kaiser's newts. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really pretty. They're very active. Uh, unlike the Chinese diamond sanders, these guys will more hunt for their food. So they'll actively move around and look for their food. Um, and you can't beat that coloration. Yeah, and I've, I've never been here when they're not moving around. Yeah. They're always swimming and exploring. And so they're really cool animals to just sit and watch for a while. All right, guys. Well, well I'm glad you came out and checked out these San Manager Hoots with us here at Brickfield Zoo. Uh, my name is Jeff, uh, and we hope to you guys share more with you in this creature. Okay, thanks a lot.